Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm so glad to see you this morning. I'm Pastor Reggie Clemens, and I'm one of the associate pastors here at First United Methodist Church, Pearland. I'm happy that you're with us this morning, and I do pray that you are safe. Uh, I pray that you're healthy, and I pray that you continue to be so as this pandemic continues. It continues to have an effect on us and have its grip on us. I want to tell you something, though. Your church staff and, and your leadership here, we appreciate the prayers that you've been lifting up for us and for our ability to continue to present worship in this virtual format. Something that, honestly, we had never done before consistently as a church before March. And so we especially appreciate the prayer that you've lifted as you've prayed for us personally and prayed for our families and prayed for the staff. This has been a challenging time for us, as I'm sure you know. But we're committed as staff and leadership to continue to present quality worship services and to continue to, to pray and to continue to present programs and continue to supply, provide support for our community and beyond. Now, you may be aware that for the last several weeks, we've been in a sermon series, Summer on the Mount, which has taken us on this journey as we've examined the words of Jesus known as the Beatitudes and the subsequent verses. And this has been good. It's been really good. But as I am sure you're aware, the events that speak to the need for racial reconciliation that have taken over our nation the past several weeks have created a great amount of anxiety and angst and desperation and confusion. But even in light of all that is before us, we can't stop. We can't stop. We can't let there be any confusion about where our highest commitment should be, and that's to Jesus Christ. And more than anything else, I am totally and fully committed to Jesus. His church, the gospel, and the gospel is the greatest hope of any single community, any race, any people in the world. And that's where I am. And that's why I'm staying, period. Now, you know, even though many of you may be tired of hearing or, or seeing about the need for reconciliation and tired of seeing the images on your television screens and tired of the opinions and the narrative and the conjecture, you need to realize that it is the job of the church, the job of the church to address and to work to do something about injustice anywhere and everywhere it is. Now, I do want to acknowledge, though, that this church is not unlike any other church. There are a great deal of diverse opinions about just about anything, not unlike any church across America. And I dare say we are probably just like the world that has diverse opinions about everything as well. And in fact, dealing with the church can sometimes be no different than dealing with society when it comes to dealing with difficult matters. We sometimes just find it easier just to move on. But I came to tell you today that we can't continue to just move on because that's not what Jesus calls us to do. In fact, I believe that in times of utter despair and uncertainty, the church is the institution that people will look to to see how we respond. Not that the world will always agree with our response. Sometimes we don't even agree with our response. But if we are who we say we are, and if we are working to be who we aspire to be, then we, the church, have to look to Jesus. And frankly, Jesus had no difficulty responding to difficult situations. And I do believe he would want us to take that same approach. The result of our efforts should be a people that believe it is important that we stand together. And I think it's even more critical now that we show the world that God's people will not allow themselves to be divided. Pandemic or no pandemic. 
Because where God's people are concerned, where one of us is hurting, all of us are hurting. Now, Scripture speaks to this. Hear the words from 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 14, and 26 through 27. Just as a body through one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so is it with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit to as form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, you, you ever get a migraine or, or food poisoning or even a severe toothache? You know, I remember many years ago, I was having my wisdom teeth removed, all of them. Now, you would think that they would have left one of them just in case I needed some wisdom, but they took them all, and the dentist told me that mine were so impacted they were going to have to cut them out, and then I would be put to sleep. But when I woke up and it was all done, it would only hurt a little bit because, the, because of the anesthesia, and then only then it would only hurt a little bit a little while. So I remember when I woke up, I felt like my head was like two sizes bigger, but I was not really in any pain. So I was really okay with that. And you know, they just smiled at me and said, it was great, we took care of everything. And they gave me a prescription for some pain meds and in case I needed them, they said. And I remember leaving the dentist's office saying, you know, I feel great. I don't even need to stop and fill this prescription. So I didn't, I went home. That was around 11 o'clock a.m. By 2 o'clock p.m., I was in so much pain I could barely see. I knew this pain had to be coming from my mouth, but it felt like when they removed my wisdom teeth, my wisdom teeth, I had wisdom teeth everywhere. My knees were weak. I couldn't even lift my arms up. I was walking around just walking into stuff. It hurt to stand up, it hurt to sit down, it hurt to lie down. It just hurt all over. Now here's the point I'm trying to make. If one part of your body hurts, everything else gets affected. It doesn't matter if it's only your wisdom teeth, it doesn't matter if it's your little toe and you stub it hard against the ground. If you stub your little toe hard against the ground, your whole body's going down. When that pain gets to going in you, you can't stop thinking about it, even if it's only one part of your body. When one part of your body is hurting, it affects every single other part of the body. See, I believe this scripture passage is a metaphor to what is critical to what's going on right now. We are the body of Christ, the spiritual figurative body in the world. And each of us is a member of this great spiritual body created to love God and to love others and to be those implementers of Jesus' mission in the world. We who call Jesus Christ our Savior and our Lord are called to repent and to love our neighbor as ourselves. This is how we are connected. A universal church. Jesus Christ Church. So just like our physical bodies, if one member of our group or one member of the spiritual body is hurting, Everybody is affected. So I guess you must ask yourself that if you, if you don't believe that, then you have to ask yourself, 
do you really believe in Jesus? Because that is the point of this whole life. It is to love one another as much as we love God. That's the thing that about all of this that has been going on that has just caused me so much personal pain. It's hard for me to see that knowing this, that knowing what is going on, that we can't believe that God is okay with this. We cannot believe that this is what God wants for us. God doesn't want us to be this way. Can't you just hear God saying to you, in the midst of all you might want to believe or affirm, I created you, even in your uniqueness. There is more that connects you than there is that separates you. Now, you know, I know this is difficult for some of you to believe, but you don't have to take my word for it. The sixth chapter of the prophet of Micah, where the prophet says, the first thing in that chapter, listen to what the Lord says. And then he continues, and in this passage, I believe he speaks one of the shortest, simplest verses in the Bible for those of us that may have questions as to how we are to respond to times like these. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. So I'll tell you this. I may not have all the answers as to how we can solve eons of issues, but I do believe that it is up to us, the church, Christians, to do something. We can begin by admitting that we have a problem. Even if a problem doesn't affect you, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. What I'm saying to you here that if any of us, any of us have a problem, we all have a problem. And people, racism is a problem. If we allow racism to continue to exist, then we will never stand together. And I do not believe that Jesus died for us so that we would separate ourselves from God and from one another. Racism occurs when people or institutions have the power to inflict prejudice or discrimination or antagonism against a person or people because they are part of a racial or ethnic group. You see, that's not saying that any group or ethnicity may not have some bias or prejudice. You can sadly find bias and prejudice in any group of people. But notice, it's not just individual prejudice, it's also institutionalized prejudice and power in a system. So racism is the history of slavery and legalized separation laws in this country's past. Racism is the derogatory names people call one another and in those systemic discriminatory practices. You know, I've had a bunch of conversations with a lot of people over the last six weeks. And even though we've had folks, I've talked to people, opinions are all over the place about all kinds of stuff that they may see, but I have not had one person that I have talked to that told me they felt racism was okay. Not one. In fact, most people will talk to you and they'll begin by telling you, I'm not racist because racism is a sin. And who is going to tell you that sin is okay? So sometimes when we know something is going on and it's not okay, we will focus on some of the reasons that those things may be taking place, which allows us to move our focus from the real issue. And that becomes what we talk about. And those are the voices that we may affirm. And our voices may rise, but they don't always speak from the same perspectives that Jesus taught us. And I'll tell you what, social media is a great forum for that. But I want you to be mindful. The Bible speaks to this too. We need to be careful. Because when we move from what Micah calls us to do, we tread dangerously 
into an area that has nothing to do with the life Jesus calls us to live. Hear these words from the third chapter of James, verses 5 through 10. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. This is the word of God for the people of God. You see, folks, I believe we have to be careful. If we don't tell the world that we are not going to stand for some things, that we're not going to stand for stuff that's not righteous, then I believe that we hereby revoke our membership in the body of Christ. And as members of the body of Christ, we need to strive for justice. We need to love mercy. And most of all, we need to walk humbly with God. These events, as painful and as devastating as they may be, do not have to end up separating, separating us further from each other than we already are. The door is wide open to have honest, brutal, and sometimes painful dialogue and conversations with our goal to resolve the gulf that divides us. To solve this. You hear me? To solve this. To say no more to the sin that not only separates us from one another, it separates us from God. We have an opportunity to say no more. People of faith, we don't just fight a battle against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual powers of darkness in our world. And that's from Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 12. This is a spiritual battle. Racism is a sin, and sin is part of a spiritual battle fought in every human heart, but it's up to us to do something, to do something now so we can stand together. But honestly, it's up to you. I mean, I, I will tell you what I'm going to do, but it's still up to you in terms of what you're going to do. I have no doubt about what I'm going to do, but it's up to you to decide what you're going to do. I'm going to continue to speak the truth, not my truth, but God's truth. I'm going to continue to work towards eradicating the sins of our society, of which racism certainly is one, but it's not the only one. I'm going to endeavor to work to do the work that God calls me to do. And even if I fail, even when I struggle, even when it hurts, I am not going to give up. I'm going to probably meet some people that will not only not agree with me, they won't want to hear anything i got to say, or they'll just choose to dismiss me without a second thought. They may even want to talk about me or profane me or tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm going to be okay with that. I am going to be okay with that. Because if that's what happens, 
I'm going to be in some pretty good company. After all, I will not be the first person that's happened to. That happened to Jesus, too. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we come to you today with bowed heads and humbled hearts, thanking you for being our God and and certainly realizing, as we know you do, that there are problems in front of us, God, that you don't want to have happen. You don't want us to be separated. You don't want there to be injustice. You don't want there to be a situation where people don't love each other 24-7. So the promise that you have given to us, Lord Jesus, is that if we would live the life that you have compelled us to live, then we would truly become your people and recognize you as our God. And so we thank you for that. We thank you that you have blessed us in ways that we cannot imagine. And God, we would ask that you would allow us to do everything that we need to do right now in this place, in this time, so that we can learn to stand together. That's our prayer. And not only do we pray that prayer earnestly, sincerely, we also pray the prayer that you taught us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And amen. We do want to invite you to get connected to this worshiping community. We truly would pray and hope that you would become a part of us. Even in our online experience, we've had a wonderful time, and we just want you to contact. You can actually contact us at the website that's there to get more information about the church. And also, if you have any specific prayer request and you would like someone to pray with you, there's a phone number that you can text to. Text the word pray, and someone will contact you to pray with you. I am so thankful that we have a praying church, and I am so thankful that you have been with us today to hear the words of Jesus as we learn to stand together.